if you're an artist making original art for sale or for show, then you may be interested in barcode artwork. You make a barcode, you import a picture, and then you merge the two together somehow using, in this case, Inkscape, which is a free vector tool. And using Inkscape, I quickly and for free made these awesome designs. Let me show you exactly how I did it and how you can too. All right, we're inside of Inkscape. Let's have some fun here in Inkscape. Now, if you've never seen this program before, Inkscape is a free vector software tool similar to Adobe Illustrator. It can be a little intimidating the first time you see this screen. So no worries. We're going to be using a very specific feature of it today. There's menu items along the top. There's menu items along the left-hand side. There's menu items along the right-hand side. And then there's this cool color palette down at the bottom with all the different colors of the rainbow. Now we're gonna create a, ve a vector here, or at least a shape, and we're gonna go into extensions, render, and barcode. Now there's actually a barcode generator right inside of Inkscape. So this is pretty cool if you're a store manager, if you actually need to create a real working barcode, but we're just gonna be using this for art today. So I'm gonna click on this classic. There's different options. Feel free to click around in there. I'm just gonna use the options here that says classic. I'll go to the first one. There's a bunch of different options here. EAN2 extension. You need two numbers. And then you can also click this live preview. And this will spit out a little preview here. And then you can also select the bar height as well. You can make the bars lower. See how the bars, it's kind of tough to see here. I'll see if I can zoom in. Well, I'll just click apply. And then you can zoom in here. So as I make the barcodes higher, I click live preview again, it will make another one. So you can see it's a little bit taller. I'll click apply. So now I've got two different barcodes there. So you can make these barcodes pretty easily. That's just a couple there. Now these are shapes, okay? So they're not true vectors. So for example, the text is actually a text box. I could change that text and type in something else if I wanted, but it looks like a barcode. And then I can also just take this actual whole shape and I could stretch it. I can make it bigger, smaller. I can do whatever I want with it. So it becomes a true shape. So the first type of art you can make is very easy. Just create any sort of barcode that you like. Okay, so I used the extensions, render, and then I just created the barcode. So you can create any sort of barcode you like. And then I would recommend that you just click on it. Click on it a second time. And now you have the option. See these little corner nodes? You can now rotate this. So you could actually move this and make it look like that, for example. And then, so like that would be my barcode. It's just on the side. And then you can just import a picture of a person skiing, a skateboarder, something where this is now an angle. So I'm just gonna go to File, Import, and I'm going to import my picture. Here I've got, for example, a skater person. When I import this, it's going to ask me if I want to include this as an editable object. I'll click OK. And now my skateboarder shows up. So I could just put him in here. Again, I'll click him a second time and I can rotate how I want him to look. So maybe I do that. And there, that's easy. So you could just ro literally rotate the barcode, stick a vector on top of it of somebody doing some sort of activity, and you can just now extract that as a PNG file. Okay, so this next type of artwork involves a couple extra steps, but I think it's going to be worth it. So I've created my barcode again, just like I did before. Now this is an actual barcode, meaning I can change text on it. It's not a true vector. When I click on the little edit paths by node, nothing comes up down here for the text. So this is not a true vector. So I wanna make this a vector and I need to do it actually in a couple steps. First, I need to export this as a PNG file. So I'm gonna go over to the right hand side, the right menu, there's a little out arrow button. And when I click on that, it's going to give me an option now to make this into a PNG file. So I'm gonna click export as I've got it set up here with my folder and then I'll click export. That will now export my file as a PNG picture. So now I can delete this out. 
I don't need the actual barcode. And I'm going to import that PNG file now. So I'm going to go to File, Import. And now here I can find my PNG file and it's relatively high quality. It'll ask me to import it. So now I'm actually working on a picture of the barcode, not the actual barcode itself, which is fine because we're just using this for artwork. Now I'm going to change this into a vector, a true vector. Easy to do. I'm going to go path, trace bitmap. And then over here, I've got an option to make it darker or lighter depending on my preferences. I'm just going to leave it at 60 and I'll just click OK. Okay, so now I'm going to close this out. I've got two pictures now. One is my PNG, which I can get rid of. And now this other one is a true vector. When I click on Edit Paths by Node, you can see here there's the actual formulas to go in and edit these all by node. So this is a true vector. And that's what I want. So now I'm going to put this in my palette. And now it's kind of cool here. This is the art piece. I'm going to add a circle. I'm just going to add a circle like that. Move the circle on top. Maybe make it look like this, for example. And then I'm just going to select both. And then go path difference. And you can see it looks like a little cutout. So now I've created just this. And this is better than creating just a white circle because if I make the background checkerboard, you can see I've actually cut it out. It's not just a circle on top of white. So this now, if I add in my skater guy, That now gives me a whole nother option for a t-shirt, a coffee mug, an art print, that sort of thing. And again, it's very crystal clear. You can see the, the clarity of this art because I was using vectors which have an infinite level of clearness to it. The third type of art that I like making involves cities or landmarks, locations basically. And so I'm going to just import a picture now of a landmark, very famous landmark. I'm going to pick, uh, say, the Eiffel Tower, for example. It's going to ask me if I want to make this editable. I'll say sure. And then from here, I can just make this smaller or bigger depending. So I'm just going to move this into my design. I'm not too worried about the size of the actual palette because I can just always extract the entire picture. So I could do something like that if I wanted. I could also make this shorter. I could crop this down. I can even change the name inside here. So for example, these, this, these are numbers. I could change this to say like Eiffel Tower, for example, if you wanted to, right? But you could make it look a little more like a, like a barcode. Uh, with n with a name, because this is editable, right? This is just a text field. So here, for example, I've imported the Statue of Liberty. Now what I can do is I can just move this out of the way, or I can put this under, I can actually move this up to another layer. But the idea here is, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this actually a different color, just so it's easier to see. And then I'm going to move this underneath. So I'm actually going to move this below, so just so I can work on the actual barcode. So you can flip layers like up and like kind of order them. So now what I'm going to do is just select this barcode, but I'm going to edit the individual paths. So I'm going to zoom right in. I'm going to pick this path here and I can make this shorter if I want. I can actually make this quite a bit shorter. I could remove this right down to underneath the Statue of Liberty. I could put it down here, for example. Same thing with this one. I can move it right down to the bottom down here. You just have to zoom right in to make sure you have it as accurate as possible.
Okay, so I've moved all the bars down there. I just sped it up so you don't uh, die from boredom. But okay, so now we're going to just change this Statue of Liberty back to black. And we can see now we've got this sort of embedded inside the barcode. Now I'm going to zoom way in here. You could, you could move these individual nodes. Like you can change these and make them like inside. Like you can just push them right inside the Statue of Liberty statue. So it, because it's all black, no one's ever going to notice if it's a slight overlap. But like here, for example, it's not quite on. But you could do that. You can also make sure these are all exactly lined up or you can crop it. You can do all sorts of neat things in here. You can also change the text if you want it as well. So down here I could say, you know, um, New York City and, uh, you know, USA, for example. For this last example, this is kind of technically complicated, a little bit more, not really, but I'm going to stick a, what I call tree head in this picture. So I've just downloaded a free picture online and it's an overlay of a head, but it's also tree branches. So this is now going to be sitting inside the barcode as well. So I've actually taken my old barcode from an earlier example. This is the PNG file. And I'm actually going to, just going to make this into a vector. So I'm going to get rid of my tree head here just for a second. Trace this to a bitmap. Path, trace bitmap. Just hit OK. Remove that. So now I've got two copies. My old PNG I can throw away. My new vector I can keep. And I can just double check it's a vector by clicking Edit Pass by Node. I can see it's all nodes there. And now I can import my picture of my tree head. I'll click OK. This now gives me the tree head pick. I can now put this tree head picture right inside the barcode, something like that maybe. I'm just going to change the bar, the, the head of the person to a different color. And I'm just going to bump it down underneath it just so I can work with the layers. So now what I can do is I can actually edit these paths because the barcode is a true vector. I can actually go in and I can change how this looks. So I can move these down into sort of weird nodes. Okay, so I just modified the barcodes and I'm just going to change now my tree head and just make it black again. And again, this I, I can change it to any color I want. I just, I just want to keep it all black here. So we can see now the barcodes at the bottom. I've kind of merged up. I've bent a couple. I've made a couple. You, you could really spend some time on this, obviously. I'm just going here pretty quickly. But you can move individual nodes and basically match them up into branches. And you can basically push these right into the tree. So uh, I think that's kind of cool. So there's an option there as well um, to make it sort of... Uh, you know, art, which is what the whole point of this is. The nice thing about barcode art is that it's not trademarked. So you can just basically make your own unique piece of art. You don't have to worry about ever getting a copyright strike. And these look pretty funky because people recognize, universally recognize barcodes. And if you can merge them into pieces of artwork in any of these methods, you have a good shot of making some sales. So I hope you found that helpful. As always, feel free to click the like button, subscribe button, leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching.